Hey there, last time we talked about variables and constants, things that can be changed and things that cannot be changed. Like we wrote var to mean a variable and we wrote greeting is equal to hi there and then we reassigned greeting to be equal to by there. If this was a constant, then we get an error here because we can't change it. Constants cannot be changed. We talked about how you can add numbers together and how you can concatenate strings together to make one string out of two. When we store stuff in variables or constants, it's as if you're storing those things in a box. Some boxes are made for numbers and some boxes are made for strings. Some boxes can hold anything. When you put that thing in a box for strings, you'll have a set of tools available to you made for strings. Like in this box for greeting, we stored a string. So we'll have tools that are available to us made for strings. If we stored an integer in there, then we'd have tools available to us made for integers. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to show you the power of the dot. So we created a greeting here. Let's also create a number. We're going to call it sum int. Int stands for integer, and you'll hear that a lot. We'll set it to 5. So in the sum int box, we put 5. Now we can say sum int dot advanced by, and then we give it an amount that we want it to be advanced by. So we'll say it's an advanced by 2. So we took the number 5 and we advanced it by 2, and now it's 7. We use that dot in the middle here to go into this box for this integer or this number 5 and see what tools are available to us. As soon as we press that dot, we get a list of all the tools that are available to us. So watch this. Now we get a huge list of tools. Some of those tools are super advanced and some are super simple. We'll use the simple one available to us. We used advanced by. So as soon as you start typing, it limits the list down. And we'll choose the one that wants an amount that's an integer, INT. Now we could have added two on our own, but it's nice to know that there's more tools in the toolbox available for us to help us with numbers. Let's try it out with a string. So we have our greeting here. We can say greeting dot has prefix. We can press the up and down arrows to choose it. And for the prefix, we want to see if this has a prefix of high. And over here, we can see that it does have a prefix of high. By the way, you know it's a good idea to make notes to yourself about what your program does. Otherwise, you're just looking at code all the time. And sometimes it's hard to remember what the heck your code actually does. So we can add a comment in our code to remind us this code will never, ever, ever be read by the computer. It's only for our eyes. You can write it like this. So when you come back to your code, you want to know that has prefix checks the string for a prefix. You can see we use the slash slash over here and everything over here turns green. That means that this is a comment and it never gets read by the computer. Now we know what our code does. So it's important to note that there's two types of tools available to you in every toolbox. Sometimes you want to know something about your string or your number. You want details about it. Sometimes you want to do something to your number. You want to make it do something. Let's take our string for example. We want to find something out about our string. Like, is it an empty string? Greeting, are you empty? Obviously it's not. But we can check this using our dot syntax. So we can say greeting dot is empty. That just happens to be something that's available to us. If we look over here, we can see that that's false. Of course it's not empty. It has the words hi there in it. That means that our string has content. And with our number, we took action and we actually changed our number by advancing it by two. So we can say sum int dot advance by and this time we'll advance it by six. So now our int is equal to 11 because 5 plus 6 is 11. Those parentheses there, they hold the details of our action. We want to do something like advance the number by 6 and we need to provide extra details inside the parentheses. So in this case we need to tell the tool how much we want it to advance by. This time we want to advance it by 6. When you see those parentheses 
you are using what's called a function. This is called a function. Advanced by is a function, which makes sense because what it does has a function. It has functionality. Functions are doers. They are a verb. They make things happen. The name of the function is advanced by. And without the parentheses, that would be the actual function itself. The parentheses themselves, they have a special thing that they do. They're like pressing the button that says go. They're saying do it. They are the thing that sets the function in motion. Functions are also sometimes called methods. It depends on the context that you're in for when you use the word function or method to describe them. Just know that sometimes when you see method or function, we're talking about the same sort of thing, even though there's a little bit of a difference between them, we just won't go into that difference right now. Things that work without parentheses are called properties. They get information for you, and they can set information for you too. Functions can also do that, but properties will not have those parentheses. Let's take a look at that. Imagine that there was some sort of human available to you, a human thing that has eyes and mouths and arms and feet. A property of this human could be something like eye color. So let's create a human here. We can say var human is equal to human. I have the human written on line one here, but I've just scrolled down so you can't see it because you don't need to know all about the human. It's like your car. You don't need to know how it works when you press the gas. You just need to know that when you press the gas, it goes. We have this human, and now we can say human dot eye color. So the human has a property called eye color. And when we write that, we can see that the eye color of that human is blue. We can also set the property of the eye color by saying dot eye color is equal to brown. Now the human has eye color that's brown. You can see that it traced out the details of the human. Now his name is Fred and his eye color is brown. We can take human dot eye color again and we trace it and now it's brown. You can see that up here it's blue because we didn't set it to brown yet. Now it's brown and when we trace it, it is actually brown. We can get another detail of the human. We can get his name. His name is Fred and now we can reset the name to be something else. Let's set the name to be John. So now we can get the name of the human. So now we see that the name of the human is John. This is called getting and setting properties. That makes sense because you're getting a property and you're also setting it with that equal sign. We want to make the human do something. If we wanted to do that, we'd have to use our parentheses to set that in motion. We can say human dot dance and that's a function or a method. And now you can see when you call dance, you're making him dance. John says, I'm dancing, I'm dancing. You can think of those parens as the part that says, go, do it. One more thing I wanna say before I go, all the methods and functions and properties that we've been running have been running on integers and strings. Integers are a type of number. They're tools that belong in those boxes. Like advanced by was a tool of the integer box. Eye color is a property of the human box. There are tools that we are typing in right now in its own box. You can think of this box as the world. We're typing within this entire world. And this world has tools, has functions, methods, and properties of its own. Well, of course the world itself has properties and functions, and the way that you access them, just like our real world has methods and properties of its own, is just by typing them straight up. You don't need to use the dot. So, for example, there's a function that belongs to this world called count elements. You can see I just started typing and it's available to us. That's because it belongs to the whole world. It doesn't belong to one specific human or an integer or a string. Count elements will count elements within something. And you can see that it's a function because it has those parentheses, that it's a verb, it's, it's not a property. It's not trying to find out the color or it's not trying to set the color. It's telling the program to do something. It's telling it to count do this, count. This can be used to count all sorts of stuff. Since it belongs to the world, we can use it on multiple things. Just like we can eat the leaves outside, and so can the bugs, and so can other animals. And just like trees can breathe the air, we can breathe the air too. 
These are things that belong to the world, so many things can use them. We don't have to just use this on strings, but let's try it out. So we can count the elements of our greeting from up above. So when we do, we get the number eight. That's because hi there has eight characters in it, including the space. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the length of that string. So we counted the elements of that string. If we change this string up here to add an exclamation point, down here you can see that the count elements has changed. That gave us a length of nine because our string has nine total characters in it, including the space. When we changed it, it also changed down here in the count elements area on line 37. Now our string is a length of nine. Now can you think of something else that's a string? The human dot eye color is a string. So this is maybe a little more advanced, but let's try this out. Because human eye color is a string, and it's going to resolve to the word brown, we can also count it too. So let's try it out. We can't count our human, but we can count our human dot eye color. And that's five, because there's five letters in the word brown. That's all for now. I'll see you next time.